Well, ladies and gentlemen, this was it. This was the one that broke us. How was that for a grand finale, though? Uh, I don't even want to look at the finalized video's time code for this, because we're doing this review, like, immediately after reading it. And collectively, we're probably looking at, like... An hour and a half? Yeah, that, that's the raw recording, but that's also with a lot of stumbling over just how broken the grammar was. And some brief instances of pirate speak. So... I will say, one thing I found really cool about this, the fact that they used the Higsby Lotto Trader as the way to unlock the special hidden event. I, I will say the uh, the whole birth date, death date thing was a little far-fetched, yeah. but the, the idea behind it, it kind of takes me back to, like, you know, those old Sega Genesis games where you can unlock, like, hidden things in the menus by using the sound test and all that. Like, you know, Sonic CDs are really popular example yeah. of that. It definitely had the feeling of that, like, playground BS. Oh yeah, absolutely. So, that it, it's a bit of a reach, but it's one of those reaches that would work. Yeah. For, um, yeah. One thing that we don't actually find out until the very end of the story is exactly how old the protag is. If he's roughly the same age as his friend, born in 92, his friend died in 2004, and the story takes place in 2004, that's... The protag's like 12? 12, yeah. Yeah. So, that, that does make some sense for his reactions to be you know, yeah. like that. So, um, Definitely the age that I was falling for. Yeah. But in my defense, I got hit with the, the gold and silver using cut on patches of grass. And if that worked, I was willing to believe anything. I mean, fair, fair. I, um, do, I do have to say, I love that it plays into a classic Mega Man Battle Network trope of just like, oh, this wholly unexpected thing has happened to Mega Man and I have no idea what it's going to do. And every time I see it, I just can't help but just think of Yuichiro Hikari going, Look, son, I committed crimes against humanity when I digitized your brother's soul. This is unexplored territory. I don't know. And it it just plays on repeat in Battle Network. Yeah, because that ends up being, like, after a certain point, the major plot MacGuffin, because it's like, in uh, Battle Network 1, suddenly... Mega Man has Hub's soul. We just get this plot bomb dropped. Battle Network 2, they got the whole heart program so they can go full synchro to stop gospel. Battle Network 3, okay, not used quite as much there, except for plot device, but Battle Network 4 and 5, the whole overcoming their dark soul kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, their bond is brothers, the Deus Ex Machina, just calling out Hub's name and that fixes everything. And then Battle Network 6, he's like, he's suddenly got a side beast inside of him. Yeah, just like, look, Land. A human soul that is not meant to be in the internet just absorbed an eldritch god. Your guess is as good as mine, kid! <laughs> so, I, I like that they played into that. Yeah, um, I will say, this this did give me pretty big Easter egg snow on Mount Silver vibes, and you told me you haven't read that one. I do not believe I have. Basically, it's the setup is kind of the same thing, except it's like siblings, and the brother didn't die, he just got heavily traumatized by the imagery from the game. But the whole thing of coming in, finding a cheat code written down on a piece of notebook paper, uh, and the Game Boy or DS is, like, shattered into pieces. Then the player takes the cartridge and then experiences yeah. it themselves. It's, it's very similar. It's a very sim sim similar formula that I'm sure has been recycled in countless other game and Kirby bosses yeah. as well. But uh, I feel like this would make a fun fan mod. And now that the Battle Network yeah. collection's on Steam, and I feel like PC Battle Network has like more mod potential than Game Boy Battle Network does, but again, it's Battle Network 4. I don't know how many people are big enough fans of Battle Network 4 to try to incorporate such mods. Which, that actually kind of makes it a funny meta joke that there's so many like typos and run-on sentences in this pasta about Battle Network 4, when Battle Network 4 is the one with the worst translation out of the entire... <laughs> Entire series. Like, there's one line where it said, uh, it's probably just a bad translation or something, and we both look at each other and like, it's Battle Network 4, it was a bad translation. <laughs> um, content wise, I really like this one, actually. Yeah. Game, like, as far as the gameplay stuff happened, yeah, I, I thought it, it would have been really creepy to see if that actually happened. It was, it was a little bit of a spooky tale. Uh, of course, with the, like we said before, with these bosses, you, you can't really nitpick too much when he's like, yeah. Come into the real world. As long as the protag, or as long as the narrator isn't dead, that's the one that absolutely kills it for me most of the time. It's like, how are we hearing the story? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, we could, uh, if you wanted to look at it from a meta sense, if the protag died, and, you know, Cyber Mega Man, you know, Mega Man EXE absorbed his soul, uh, now he's in the internet, he's writing the story as a call for help to try to get out. But again, I mean, that's the protag... That's fair. That's 
really fair, actually. But the protagonist survived this story, so that's not what happened. But uh, yeah. one thing I thought was very completely unnecessary, they mentioned the parents died, just out of nowhere. No explanation, no further elaboration on that either. I guess, might have been trying to hint that Mega Man was yeah, out in but, the world now. Yeah, I was going to say that that's almost definitely what happened. I but thought it was going to go the route of, like, Reaper Mega Man taking over his body. Yeah, that that actually would have been a pretty cool angle to collect things from. Um, but either way, it was still all right. Yeah, it, it, was, it was an enjoyable read for those who are fans of the series. That's about all I got for it. It's honestly one of the more enjoyable ones. Yeah, just... Again, fix up the grammar and writing. So yeah, uh, I, I thought this whole little creepypasta marathon thing was a lot of fun to do. Yeah, honestly, it really was. I don't know if we're going to make this a regular thing. We just kind of wanted to do the whole Mega Man passes this year because Battle Network came back in such a big way. We're all like reliving our childhood and early teenage years just with the... Yeah, over so why not bring out the trauma too? Right? <laughs> well, to a certain extent, just bring out some of the nostalgia from yesteryear just to kind of throw onto the pile, just have some fun with it. That, that's really yeah. all we're getting at here. So again, may not may or may not do this again next year if we got enough to work with. I don't think we'll read like just every creepy pasta ever. That's not where we're going with this, most likely. So uh, if we can find more Mega Man ones to read or more related to whatever our staple content continues to be or is at the time, then perhaps. But, you know, uh, we don't know what the future holds. We yep. didn't know that we'd be where we are now this time last year. So. Yep. But, but either way, we really hope you guys enjoyed. And we hope that you'll, you know... Stick with us till this time next year, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> we hope that we can continue to keep putting out uh, content that you all enjoy and that you'll continue to be part of this community that we built around here. All right. That being said, this has been Ryoji42. And Blake Cross EXE. With Flashing Blades Productions. See you next time. Peace out. Peace.